welcome back to an episode of the Open Source Cafe. And today we have Eris joining us from Sparkle. And we're going to talk a little bit more around observability platforms. But before we get started, um, Eris, would you like to tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you do? Uh, so hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Eris, uh, CTO and co-founder of uh, Sparkle. And a bit about myself. So I'm what you can call a pretty hardcore uh, coder or developer. I've been working on code for the last 20 something years. And uh, I've actually worked on code at pretty much every step of the software stack or every level of the software stack, starting from uh, assembler and microcode, which is one level below assembler, I'm working on Linux kernel, uh, networking, storage. Uh, eventually I work, graduated working on Java and now working on plot, uh, cloud platforms. Uh, so it's been an interesting ride so far, and uh, I really love technology, and uh, this is why I do it. Amazing! And can you tell us a little bit more about Sparkle, uh, where you work, what you would, what, what, what's it all about, and yeah. Okay, so we actually started Sparkle uh, out of our own need. Uh, we were a team of four uh, co-founders, and we worked at our previous company called uh, Testcraft. Uh, which we sold to Profos uh, around pretty much uh, 2019 or 2020 when the COVID hit. And while working on uh, Testcraft, it was very evident that something is missing. Uh, it's like we were a team of developers and we were all working on the same uh, code base. Each of us was pushing uh, commits into different parts of the application. But we were all getting the same kind of feedback. It doesn't didn't matter where you were pushing your code to, right? You could push code to, to this one uh, microservice or to another microservice, and you will always get the same feedback when you log into the APM. Uh, it's like there's a single Twitter feed in the world, and we're all subscribed to it. And it has all the topics in the world, but to find the ones which are interesting to you, you have to look very hard and start sifting through a lot of information. Uh, and obviously, we thought it didn't make sense. And this is why we started Sparkle, so you can get uh, personalized or personal uh, information from your APM uh, directly where you are. Amazing. So it's like an, it's a plus, it's an observability platform personally, like for individual developers, right? Mm -hmm. And is that like one of the like do you do you offer like an option to instrument all the code or is it just like in the what's what's relevant to our own code changes? Uh, okay, so Sparkle actually is based on Open Telemetry. And we are using open telemetry's uh, instrumentation capabilities. So we can instrument the entire code base. Uh, and we are instrumenting what we call the infrastructure. Because uh, uh, any APM user will tell you that uh, the instrumentation is usually the infrastructure level. It's telling you about calls coming to APIs, queries going down, traversing through the microservices. But there is a big black hole in the middle. And it's called your app, it's the entire code base. And this one is usually not instrumented unless you bother to do the work yourself and go and instrument it uh, manually. So what we do is we actually put our instrumentation in the black box or in the black area. Uh, and we don't put it in any random area. We put it uh, in the areas which have changed or which are of interest to you. Uh, so to answer your question, the entire code base is instrumented uh, or the entire infrastructure is instrumented, but we add a little more instrumentation in the parts which are more interesting uh, which is usually the code changes or the recent ones. Nice. So not only at infrastructure level, but like at code level as well. Exactly. Cool. And how do you do it? Like, can you tell us a little bit more about like in the technical details? Uh, well, I, I can tell you, but I'll have to kill you. No, just kidding. Uh, so the way we do it is we actually analyze the code changes from uh, the Git perspective. Uh, we actually perform uh, git diffs on the code. This way we know which parts have, have changed and which parts have changed by whom. Uh, because our uh, uh, feedback is personalized, so we want to give each developer his own personal feedback. So we don't instrument changes from the entire team. We instrument the changes from uh, only done by you if you want to see them. Uh, and once we know which parts of the application has changed, we actually, uh, once the uh, the code is loading into memory, we actually change it in memory just in time before starting to run. So it's kind of like uh, a transpiler. Uh, it's changing the, the code just in, before it executes in memory, not changing anything on disk, uh, placing the spans and uh, the metrics right inside the code. 
this will, when the code starts running, it will start emitting telemetry data, which we then catch, analyze, and provide the feedback in uh, your IDE. So you're not changing like the, the files and the, the code itself? No. The functionality? Uh, hmm. No. Uh, we actually did quite a lot of work uh, to enable you not even to, uh, usually if you want to add open telemetry or stuff like that, you will need to change your code. You will need to require certain yeah. files and you will need to add certain libraries. We did a lot of work, so you won't even have to do that. So you can just use our CLI and just run Sparkle dash dash your command, and you will get everything else for free. And our code will be instrumented, and you look for code changes and everything. And does it affect like other environments, like staging or production? So our first product uh, does not affect anything. It's made for devs running, working locally on their uh, laptops, and it doesn't change the code so nothing gets committed and you don't push it to staging or production. It all stays local. Uh, the entire processing and the traces and the spans are all kept locally uh, in what we call the Sparkle agent, which is just a container. You can delete it at any time if you don't want it. And so it doesn't change anything, not on disk. And the, the instrumentation doesn't go anywhere and you cannot even see it anywhere unless, unless you really, really want to. Uh, and you can get your instrumented files from us uh, but you have to seek it out uh, specifically. Uh, our next steps will be to start working on uh, CI. We actually are launching these days our new version of uh, observability for CI CD. Uh, we're working with uh, GitHub Actions. And the way that we implement it is we created a, a GitHub application and a GitHub Action, uh, which instruments everything that goes after it. So if you uh, start the call the action, then you can later run your commands with Sparkle and everything that you do will be instrumented and sent to a local container in your CI CD environment. And uh, the summary will later appear inside your GitHub application conversation, inside your GitHub conversation right on your PL. So you don't have to go looking for it uh, anywhere else. It just uh, will be available inside your uh, PL. And what's nice about it is that first of all, it allows you as a reviewer to see the effects of a code change without even, uh, before even starting to review it, because we all know that code reviewing is kind of a hard process and it takes a long time. This way you can get the executive summary of what went on in a code uh, change without even having to read a single line of code. And also in case it fails and you want to debug it, you can just pull the traces locally to your local machine and see the traces in your side, your IDE, and debug it as if it happened locally. So instead of start sifting through the logs and trying to figure out what happened, you can just get traces and, and code references right inside uh, your machine. Amazing. And you mentioned about you know, using like you use open telemetry, uh, telemetry and stuff. Um, do you use Jaeger as well? Do we use what, sorry? Jaeger. Yes. Uh, so we do ship Jaeger uh, out of the box. We really like it. Uh, I think we think it's an amazing tool. Uh, so once you install Sparkle, you're actually getting a, a full Jaeger instance <laughs> ready to use right inside your IDE. And if you want, you can actually uh, go and use it uh, freely without us. So it's uh, available. You can just open your uh, browser and get a full Jaeger instance. And we also already did all the wiring work. So the open telemetry uh, instrumentation will send everything to Jaeger and you can just view it uh, there. Yeah, so, so you don't have to like install it on your own. It, no, no, it, it, cool, cool. it comes, it comes pre-configured out of the box and you get it for free. Nice, all right. And uh, can you tell us a little bit more about, let's talk about the use cases, like how is this um, you know, basically helping make my life easy? Uh, yeah, so, the way I see it, the way we see it is that development is kind of like an iterative process and it should be based on data, right? Like you make a code change, you change uh, some small part of the code base. Usually it's a very big code base and you're working on a very tiny fraction of that. Uh, and once you've done that small code change, uh, you run it. Uh, and then you try to figure out how it performed. And if it went well enough, then you push it. But usually happens. It, that it doesn't perform well enough or it doesn't work at all. And you have to rewrite it and make adjustments and stuff until uh, it's ready to, uh, to get committed or to be pushed. So with Sparkle, you can actually do what the uh, process, which is known as uh, observability-driven development. 
instead of looking for answers about how your code change performed using logs or uh, uh, adding metrics or uh, everywhere and trying to figure out how it performed, uh, you can actually get it for free with Sparkle because we already instrument your code changes. You get the executive summary of the code change effect right inside your IDE. You can then review the executive summary to figure out how it performed and if it was good enough uh, to your uh, standards. And then repeat the process. So you're actually coding, reviewing the, the executive summary, making changes, and uh, rerunning again. And But this time, it's a much faster process because you don't have to look for the data. It all comes looking for you, and it's all inside the ID, and it's all very visual and, and, and much easier to understand. And also, we have uh, dedicated parts for insights, which are what we call opportunities for improvement, right? Like they're not necessarily errors and they're not warnings. You, it may be stuff that which is okay with you, but these are usually things that you can improve if you want to, uh, like little performance optimizations or security issues that you are, may want to address and stuff like that. Amazing. Well, thanks a lot for sharing. And since we're talking about languages, can you tell us a little bit more about what are the current languages that you support? Uh, yes, so we actually started out with Node, and we currently offer support only for Node. And on Node, then all its derivatives, so it's okay with the TypeScript, or you could use it with the vanilla uh, JavaScript. Uh, and we currently only support the uh, VS Code. We'll later on we'll add support for uh, JetBrains, for WebStorm, and uh, uh, other editors. Uh, but we think it's a pretty classic stack that a lot of developers use using VS Code with the uh, Node and uh, JavaScript and TypeScript uh, as is. So this is where we started. I'm guessing, and <laughs> I'll happy to be happy to get uh, votes on that. What should be our next language? Which should be Python, maybe Golang. Uh, we don't know yet. Google and how how would one like? I, I agree. Like it's a popular tech stack, but but, mm -hmm. but yeah, I'm happy to see that you know you're gradually adding support for more additional languages. Um, so you mentioned VS Code, so someone can like just then get the extension, I believe, from the marketplace. Um, yeah, yeah. How, how do they how do they get it? Like how do they sign up uh, basically to Sparkle via the extension? Yeah, so it's uh, pretty simple. You go to the VS Code marketplace, uh, you look for Sparkle. It's S P R K L, and you can see the extension there, and you can install it. Uh, it will before fin finalizing the install, it will ask for a token. And the token is not for uh, not for uh, paying, so you don't have to pay for anything. It's completely free. The, the token is just for us, so we can have some information about who is installing it. Uh, so you go out, you fill a very small form, you get the token, and you run it, and everything stays local. Uh, so uh, the token, again, is just for our purposes, just so we can keep track of who is uh, installing. And uh, other than that, everything happens automatically. It will install the agent, all the scripts that you need, Jaeger, and everything should happen uh, automatically. Amazing, nice. So we talk about uh, like uh, uh, unless we have unless we have some bugs, uh, then uh, <laughs> you yeah. can uh, reach out for support. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I'll leave the links in the description below for folks who want to get started. So my question is also around like you mentioned about you know you do all these instrumentation and all these other things. So where does this like take place? Is it like on some external servers or do you take it do it all locally? Uh, so everything is done locally. 100% locally, nothing uh, escapes your system. It's all kept inside the Sparkle agent, which is just a container. You can see it if you run any Docker command, Docker PS, you will be able to see it, and you can delete it at any time. And one of the main reasons that we chose to work like that instead of using a classic SaaS service uh, is, uh, first of all, we want to keep it secure, so you won't have any security concerns. So no privacy concerns or regulations or anything. Nothing escapes your system. It's 100% local. You can pull the, the plug out of the, of the wall, and I assure you it will still work. Uh, and the second reason is that we wanted to keep it something that any developer can try uh, without having to ask permission from anyone else, right? Because it's all happening locally, and it's all personal. Uh, you don't have to talk to your DevOps to deploy it, or you don't have to get any uh, special permissions. So it's all on your machine, just personal to you. It won't change the code, it won't push anything, it doesn't affect staging or production. And this way you can try it and uh, uh, not not having to worry about whether other people will be affected by it. 
So, so, so since it works locally, is there like any uh, overhead in performance or? Okay, so uh, the reason is not, the, the, the answer is not more than any other APM. And as I've okay. said, we instrument the, the infrastructure uh, completely mm -hmm. using open telemetry. So you can assume it's the same uh, performance impact as any other open telemetry uh, APM. Uh, and our instrumentation, which is done on the code change, uh, is not very effect effective of performance. And the reason is that usually um, you change very small part of the application, right? Like if you're working on a big code base, you're only making changes to promills of the application. So we do instrument uh, inside your code, but it's a very small part of the code base. So the effects of the performance are pretty negligible. And also I think that when you're working um, locally and debugging, uh, you usually don't care that much uh, about performance. So uh, I don't think you will feel it. And even if you do, when working locally, it's not really the, the issue. Cool, cool. And you mentioned about, you know, like for example, we talk about instrumentation. Um, can I maybe modify it a little bit accordingly? Like I can tell Sparkle, like, okay, this is what I want you to instrument. This is what I want you to skip. Like only, let's say, the commits that I have made or like from this particular point in time or whatever, or is it yeah. like reconfigured? So, so first of all, it's a great suggestion. And obviously I'd be happy to get more suggestions about what you would like to see committed. And what we currently support uh, is that you can is instrument according to what we call a Git recipe. Like for example, you can tell it to instrument all my commits or all the commits since I pushed last, uh, last time pushed or all the commits uh, that are mine or the last my commits, stuff like that, or uncommitted changes. So it's currently just based on the Git, uh, but we'll be more than happy to get more proposals at what the people will find interesting and what they would want to see. Amazing. Well, thanks a lot for sharing it is. Well, my last question is, uh, I mean, it's free to use, right, for developers now? Yeah, it's completely yeah. free. Uh, just you fill out a small form and just for our uh, uh, registration purposes and it's not asking for any uh, payments or anything else. Amazing, yeah. Just one last question is, uh, can you maybe point folks to some resources, like how they can learn more about it and get involved in your community? And I'll leave those links in the description below. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So first of all, you can always visit our website. We have an FAQ, uh, which we maintain. It's got all the answers to what we think are most relevant questions and to us got a lot of resources and docs uh, in there. Uh, we also have an example repository uh, called the uh, use uh, Sparkle. And in there, you can actually run Sparkle inside uh, Gitpod and see it in action on a repository or an example repository right inside the, your IDE. Uh, if you don't even want to install it, you can just uh, go ahead and see it in action there. And I think that's pretty much uh, and you can always contact us. We're more than happy to get any uh, feedback from anyone and uh, everything that you want to ask or any uh, comments or feature requests, we'll be more than happy to answer anyone. Amazing. Well, thanks for sharing it. It was great talking to you. Um, thanks everyone else for joining as well. Make sure you check out the links in the description below to get started. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye. Thanks, Kunal.